Now, can you hear me? Check, 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 check. No. Really? Weird. No, so it's your headphones. They're they're not headphones. They're dead phones. De I don't know where to go. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody. My name is Sean Clark, and I am the senior pastor at Faith Community Church, and I am joined um, with uh, Shane Hamstra, one yeah. of our pastoral interns. We haven't been able to get Scott back with us. I Elder know. Scott, Scott I, I, I actually texted him this morning. I said, are you working today? And he said, yeah. So Sucks to have a real job. I know, right? Seriously. He's yeah. out saving lives, and yeah. we're here, I don't know. Just, what do we do? I don't know. What do we do? Kind of like write things down and then <laughs> and expect hope, people to listen to hope, us. And hope and that then hope forget people what, listen. And yeah, then, and then forget what we even wrote down and said. <laughs> I know. That's the thing. That is the thing. It's, mm -hmm. it's very true. So yeah. Yeah. Um, you got a big weekend coming up. You're yeah. not here. You're, yeah. you're a, is Montana... Is, Mon Montana, Montana. is Montana, Montana one state away or it's two? Two. Because you got to go Idaho, Idaho right in the middle. See, I haven't been yeah. in the, the Pacific Northwest long mm -hmm. enough to actually have traveled east. So yeah. I know those states are over there. But yeah, you're right. I think Idaho is, at least the skinny part of Idaho yes. is like blocking Montana. Yeah. yeah, it only takes a little bit to get through, like an hour or something. So what are you through. doing over there? What are you going to do I'm, in Montana? Yeah, I'm going back to my old college. I keep saying old college. The college isn't old. I'm old. You're older uh, now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that I went to three years ago. And they have a youth retreat for kids in the community. And it's just a retreat weekend, and I get to be the speaker there. You're so the speaker. I'm super excited for that. And people are all going to forget what you said. Exactly. Yeah. Honestly. So yeah. you come back. Hopefully and there's... Yeah, I, isn't the goal that you hope people remember at least like one thing out of all the things that you say? Like, this is the one thing. Okay, everyone, you've had your ears off. Turn your ears on. Now listen. Yeah, I think that's it. You know, it was interesting. <laughs> this last week was Snowblast for junior high, right? And I think the pulpit... Did you see what was on the pulpit at Sunlight Church? No, I didn't. I think the phrase, <laughs> I was like, whoa. Um, it said, it said, preach the gospel, then die, then be forgotten, or mm. something like that. I'm yeah. Like, that's, I think that's a quote. That I, I, a quote well, it, it's definitely a quote. Well, it is. At yeah, least right. it's on, it's, <laughs> but I was like, that's an intense message, you know, mm -hmm. to see every time you get up there on Sunday. So, yeah, that's. It's good. Yeah. So preach the gospel, die, then be forgotten. Yeah. I think of something like that. So well, like John Piper was talking about reading books and he's like, it's a really good book for me. If there's like one big thing that sticks out to me from it. Yeah. Just take a sentence away from it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Otherwise yeah. you don't remember everything. So anyway, we used yeah. to always go to book sales, um, in the Chicagoland area and you could get, it was like us and the pastoral staff and then all of us interns. And we would just, we'd camp out like an hour or two before these book sales. And then we would just flood the religion section because you could get like great books for like 50 cents to a dollar. Mm -hmm. So you just pile in your bag or box of all these books. And then we'd come back together and kind of exchange them. And one of our senior pastors that used to serve under said, you know, when I was debating on whether or not I'd buy the book, he said, do you think you're going to get 50 cents worth of knowledge out of that book? And of course you're like, yeah, probably. So that's how I, you know, yeah. got a lot of books. And then, yeah. and then I was like, I don't know if I ever did get 50 cents out of some of them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was like, <laughs> they now I have way too <laughs> like they, they look cool, I guess. But yeah, it um, reminds me of the last session when I was at Shepherd's Conference and John MacArthur speaking and they like finally opened the doors an hour, half before. And here's like all these pastors who have been like, you know, really well behaved. Yeah. And they just, they're like running like full bore to get 20 feet closer to John MacArthur. There you go. And like That's like you guys in the J Mac in yeah. the rising pulpit. I remember the yeah. first time I saw that thing emerge. <laughs> yeah. yeah it just comes yeah. up. We don't have one of those. No. And our pulpit doesn't say preach the gospel, die, be forgotten. Yeah. We just have the, the are plain, we in a church? I know. <laughs> <laughs> just the plain Jane pulpit. Yeah. I, I think our pulpit is adjustable though. Yeah. Oh, there's, there's it? little like things in there. Down. Yeah. I've never, That's cool. yeah. And people leave stuff in the pulpit sometimes. Yeah. There's like all those like little origami yeah. things. I don't know. I actually looked those. for my headphones in there. <laughs> so I was like, there? I can't find my headphones anywhere. I'm like, you know, getting desperate. Right. So you anyway. never know. You never yeah. know where they might end up. Hey, okay. So review. <laughs> anyway, yeah. We talked in um, Mark four this week about the parable of the, 
they're the sower who sowed seeds mm-hmm. on four different soils. Yeah. So any, I mean, very popular, right? Yeah. It's maybe one of the most popular parables that Jesus used to teach on the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. Um, I showed a picture of a graphic at my former college, my yeah. old college yeah. at Moody Bible Institute. And if you walk in the arches there in one of the old buildings behind the reception desk is the picture of a stained glass, beautiful rendition of the sower sowing seed. Mm-hmm. And so what do you, I mean, I don't I, I can recap the message, but anything yeah. that you see, anything that you have your little notebook there, I don't yeah, know, if no. you know anything down that was good or. I thought anything. it was interesting how you kind of took it out of order a little bit, or it's like, we're okay. going to start with this connector between the story and then Jesus explaining it. Yeah. Where Jesus is saying like having eyes, they do not see having ears. They do not hear. Yeah. And it's not like Jesus is just like, ah, I'm being tricky. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like, no, like I'm telling them clear truth, but they just don't like their hearts are hearts are so hard. They just right. don't want to get it. Yeah. So the way that the way that Matthew tells a story, like he opens it up with two verses of like it, it, how he, how Jesus is going to start teaching in parables he tells the parable, then he, then it's like he fast forwards um, to a future point in time where Jesus is alone with the 12, with other people that are with him, and he's explaining the parable. Then he goes back and explains the parable. So it's kind of like a weird sequencing that mm-hmm. Mark does. But the, that center part there, verses 10 through 12, is just kind of the, the what I call the seemingly off-putting part, mm-hmm. where it just, it just seems like on the surface of things, it seems like Jesus is being very stingy. It's like he's saying things about the kingdom of God in, in a veiled cloaked way so that you can't, um, understand it. And so, because if you would understand it, then you would turn and be forgiven. And mm. that's just not the, that's not what Jesus was doing. Mm. Um, Jesus is, uh, is using that quote originally, um, spoken by Isaiah. Um, Ezekiel picks up on it. Jeremiah picks up on it as well, mm. but this was spoken to people who already had their hearts hard, right? They, their hearts were hardened and they weren't receptive to the prophetic word of God. And, uh, and so they had crafted these idols that had eyes, but couldn't see ears that couldn't hear. Mm -hmm. And we know from the Psalmist in Psalm 115, it says that those who make idols become like them. And so these people, Jesus was being very generous. He was, he was trying to communicate. He's trying to get in the back door of these people's lives and tell them a story that they could get caught up in it so that they could start to connect the dots back to their life and mm-hmm. see how does this kingdom of God thing apply to me, this mm-hmm. message of Jesus. So I think on the surface of things, you read it and you're like, man, why would God not want people to turn and be forgiven? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because I think when you just read the surface level, but you need to understand the context of that and where it was coming from. Jesus was speaking like a prophet of old at that time. And everybody yeah. would have known Isaiah Ezekiel, Jeremiah, hey, that sounds very familiar. Yeah. Let's not be like what they were. Let's yeah. actually receive what he's giving to us. Yeah. So, well, and we know the power of stories. Like, there's a reason we tell so many stories with kids and even yeah. in, in sermons and like even thinking to my teaching this weekend, I'm yeah. adding different stories, you know, either from the Bible or outside just to, because they stick with you. Yeah. Like, you might forget all of my words, but we, we resonate, I feel like, with the, the feeling and an emotion. Yeah. of the story and there's there's a connection between the thoughts and the emotions and just everything that yeah. makes it stick with us well when i talked about that last week as i hinted i thought this is so great the way jesus capitalized on this opportunity he's out on a boat he sees people on on the soil right of the shoreline of the sea of galilee and he is going to tell them a story about four different types of soil three of which um are no good for producing any type mm-hmm. of yield and, and only one of which is actually um, receiving things in the present tense, presently, actively applying um, what is being said, and then producing a crop, a yield that's 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. Mm-hmm. And so um, really, I just kind of walked the congregation through here. It's like, well, op- you know, especially for farmer country, like, yeah. which, is, which is the only option that you'd want if you're a farmer, right? Well, it's not one, two, or three. It's definitely four, right? Yeah. It's just obvious. So now Jesus tells a story and people have to think about it, right? Okay, mm-hmm. what am I going to do with what he just said to me? Is it going to produce anything presently, actively? Um, the investment that he has made in my life is it gonna? Is he going to when the harvest is sent? Is it gonna produce anything of value? Mm-hmm. Right. So I think that's um, that's what we talked about this last week. 
Yeah. So, and it actually bridges re- really nicely into what we're going to look at this next week because Jesus is going to tell three more kingdom tales um, about the kingdom. And once again, he's trying to slip these kingdom truths into the back door of our lives so that we have to deal with them Mm -hmm. whether we want to or not. And the advancement of the kingdom of God in our lives is not dependent upon um, the message. There's nothing wrong with the message. It's dependent on whether or not our hearts will receive that and allow Mm -hmm. it to grow. Um, will we, will we apply what we're hearing? And so they're just, these three more kingdom tales are going to kind of, um, flesh that out a little bit. And, um, the, the basic points of the sermon are going to be this, um, oh, what is it now? I forget. <laughs> I don't even know. No, and I know I do know. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Let me think. Give me one second. Um, this, the, the, f- oh, the first point is that there is, there's a revealing coming. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, the second point is um, the harvest is inevitable. Mm-hmm. The sickle will be sent. Mm-hmm. And um, even though the kingdom started from very ordinary beginnings, there's going to be an extraordinary ending. And so the one application point is this. Spend time with the king in private because mm-hmm. that's what these guys did. They 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 came to him with their question, said, we don't quite get all this stuff. Can you help us? Yeah. And that is the that's the place... Um, where any disciple needs to be, you don't, you don't have it all figured out. You yeah. need to come to him and say, okay, can you explain this to me? Yeah. Help me understand this, you know, help my unbelief. So, mm-hmm. um, these kingdom tales have a way to kind of get into our lives and make us wrestle with important things. Mm-hmm. So, well, and like, if we're going to be able to help serve and build up others, like we need to be drawing upon the source, yeah. like yeah. constantly yeah. as yeah. much as possible. Yeah. So yeah, there you go. That's uh, that was last week. Mm-hmm. That's a little preview of this week. Um, we got a prayer time coming up with Elder Roy Burdan during oh, the equipping hour. I'm gonna miss. It. I know so. we're gonna miss you too. Yeah. I get to lead music in your yes. place. Yeah, so you're that's doing like fun. You're doing double duty again. I know a little double duty. Yeah. And then uh, next week we have oh. Yeah, is this this ne- Thursday. Th- this Thursday is the Seder. Yeah, but you can't sign up for that. That's yeah. already we already we already maxed out yeah. like crazy maxed out on that. Yeah. Good response. And That's then cool. um, we do have a Good Friday service next Friday night at six thirty p.m. We're mm-hmm. gonna um, look into the the irony that um, the last moments of Jesus' freedom took place in a, in a serene garden setting, mm-hmm. and um, you know, the Bible starts in the garden. Um, in the middle, there's a garden. In the end, there's a garden. Mm-hmm. So we're going to kind of just briefly touch on those themes and uh, have a time of communion. And then obviously Resurrection Sunday. Man, yeah. we're looking forward to that. we got a breakfast coming up. Yeah. And uh, and then we, we get to choir. engage choir singing yeah. and we get to preach and kids are going to be in the service. It should be fun. So mm-hmm. a lot of great things happening at the FCC. Indeed. So anything else you want to say before you leave? I don't think so. And go two states away. Yeah. When do you get back? I get back Monday afternoon. Okay. Uh, yeah. Is there anything that you're looking forward to, like f- food wise, experience wise, in Montana? Like, what's Montana known for <laughs> besides cold mountains and stuff like that? Well, that's exactly where I'm going. Is a cold mountain. A cold so. mountain. <laughs> okay. I'm I'm really excited to go back and get to spend time with. Uh, three really close friends. Abe? Yes, Abe's going to be there, and Peyton, who just had Abe. a baby, and Caleb. And I don't know if we're hanging out with anyone else, but I know those three. Yeah, you know Abe. You I know, know him. I barely know Abe. Yeah. But he you actually, know. he was a silent yeah. partner with us. Yes. And um, yeah. in Review Previews Past. Yeah, that was So, fun. Abe. Yeah. Take care of this guy. I know send he him, watched the last one. Send so. him back to us. Yeah. <laughs> so. so that, and then I get to hang out with my mentor, Lowell who was like a really big influence through my years of college as well. Good. So awesome. It'll be fun. Shout out yeah. to Lowell. Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys uh, on Sunday morning, unless you're coming to the Seder tomorrow night. Yeah. So we'll see you guys. Bye. My headphones don't work. <laughs>